Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is April 26th. I uh, started filming this garden tour the 18th. Have not got to finish yet. Uh, for one reason, I'm trying to show y'all everything. And another reason I talk too much. So uh, this will be part five of my spring garden tour. If you're tuning in for the first time and like this sort of stuff, be sure to like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. So uh, thank y'all for watching. Let's, uh, let's get into part five. Y'all uh, come along with me and check everything out. All right, guys, I don't remember where I left off in the last video, but we're gonna start right here on uh, this Acer Palmatum Koi. Uh, this is an excellent Makawa variant. Throws off uh, great shades of uh, orange to red to bronze colors in the spring. This one did get hit a little, with a little bit of frost, but it is recovering, as you can see. Last few years, had some late frost in, in March, so been struggling with that on a few things. This Acer Palmatum Koi, three to four footer in 10 years. Uh, got a plant in front of this uh, blue spruce that I'm working on, which is called the Blues. Can't remember if I've showed you this or not, but it's got a bunch of new growth coming off of it. I think this is a zone seven, but I'm gonna try it out here in a uh, full sun. This, the blues, this cultivar is actually supposed to be a little bit more uh, heat and sun tolerant from what I understand. So, got it out here. It'll be in full sun to probably three to four o'clock and uh, putting a lot of new growth out. Probably time for me to uh, hit it with another fungicide again for, for the needles. So uh, I'll do that pretty soon. Yeah, that's uh, just a crazy, uh, evergreen kind of contorts and train it to grow as you want i'm just playing with it right now to see if i like it but got that leader staked up there and i got that one propped up we'll see how it comes along and guys as you can see i still need to mulch and i've got held back on doing a lot of that recently anyway moving on to the next one uh, have acer palmatum black lace Really interesting uh, dark foliage on it. Holds its dark foliage all season. And one that's been a tank for me in the sun has just uh, really impressed me. Uh, has, it, has it skipped a beat with the sun on it? I think this was maybe eight, nine foot in 10 years. But this is uh, second full season on the ground, doing really well. Out of here, have a uh, Another limelight hydrangea that uh, I started. There's another one over there I showed you. And this is a little bit older one that I planted. Uh, gets the big mop head type flowers. Likes a lot of water as well. And let's see, next to it, this is what's left of a truncatum called baby dragon. Not sure what happened, not sure if it got too dry, too wet here, but um, branches on it are really pretty thin. Had green on it last week, so I decided to leave it, see if it'd push anything out, but looks like that is gonna get pulled, so it's part of it. Back up here, show you this uh, Acer palmatum. Kirinajishi. This is uh, the red lion's head maple. And this one is looking really good. Bought this one last year, I believe, is a one gallon, pretty nice size one gallon. It's holding the red color really well for me. Another slow grower, probably six to eight foot in 10 years. Then I have what's left of a uh, smaller Kirinajishi. This has been planted here for over a year. I've had this one, I don't know, three to four years, and it never really grew a lot. Uh, so I think it finally decided to check out this past uh, this past March. I think it got hit, and it looks like it's done. So All right, I'm, I'm planning to maybe plant a row of Macau variants right here. That's why I got that koi right there. You can see. 
and plant some Macau variants in front of it maybe. But moving on. Now this is one I'm just uh, moving around. Hadn't decided where I'm gonna plant it. This is a, uh, it's called Pancake Juniper. I'll show you the tag. Yeah. Juniper Horizontalis Pancake on the standard. And uh, got a pretty smoking deal on this. I think I only paid about 30 bucks for it. And uh, if you look online, places like, I think Conifer Kingdom or something like that, these are going for right around $65 for one gallon. And this one is on a standard. I think I gave 30 bucks for it. So uh, pretty good deal. Pretty dang good deal in my opinion. Just, just kind of moving around, see where I like it. Not sure that's where it's ended up. I'm not sure if that's where it's gonna end up, but that's where I've got it for now. Behind it to the left, this is a uh, Cryptomeria. Nana Globosa Cryptomeria. I think I bought this as a five gallon, maybe a seven gallon. I actually had it planted in the front yard where the Macau Yatsubusa sits now and moved it to the back. And this this thing will get this thing will get on up there. It'll get probably six foot tall at least, probably in the next four to five years. So uh, if you see those, and it does say dwarf, they will get bigger. And it's got a lot of new growth pushing out on it right now. You see that? But just one of them that kind of soft to the touch. Nice little anchor piece in the garden. It's gotten pretty wide since I planted it last season. I, I, I guess so be a nice uh, evergreen accent right there next to have some uh, I think this is a uh, Amsonia cannot remember the variety of it thought I had a tag around here but it seems I've lost the tag but I have a couple different types of Amsonia I have storm cloud Amsonia uh, which I'll show you in a little bit and then I have this one. Uh, this will get three to four feet tall over time as a, as it builds more roots. I think this will get taller as the more sun you give it. And uh, get some orange to yellow fall color. Nice flowers on it. First time it's actually flowered for me since I planted it. All right, stepping back, have a Cedrus Labana Hedgehog. And this one is a sharp one. It's a really cool one. We get wide, low, low and wide. But it'll bite you if you're not careful. It is a it is sharp. It's got some really nice blue, blue green cast to the needles. It just looks pretty crazy looking conifer, you ask me. So I did purchase one last winter and put it in the garden. That'd be nice to see it fill out, space out in this spot right here. Back up here, have a Easter palmatum, Hinezu Hagaromo, if I'm saying that right. So you got the tag. But Cecilifolium type, uh, leaves up just like a chartreuse, bright orange, and yellow. And it's faded to some green, but it's still got some, some of that yellow chartreuse and green color on it some pinks in it this is another one that's uh doing really well in sun for me here handle the sun like a tank need to stake this leader up right here probably need to stake that up get back out here and stake that up that's the folium type i guess you call it angel feather type that is a really interesting one that one to add so i bought it plant it right here uh, last year, maybe year four, can't remember. But it's done very well there. Moving on, this is a uh, big snowdrift crab apple. I planted, heck, I don't know. I want to say maybe eight years ago. No, not eight, maybe five, six or seven years ago. Five, six, seven years ago, something like that. But as a uh, 10 to 15 gallon, I believe. Flowers white in the spring. Doesn't flower as great as some of them, but a nice uh, little shade tree. 
or an ornamental tree here anyway. All right, down below it, this is a, uh, this is called Ojishi, Acer Palmatum Ojishi. Uh, another, uh, I guess you kind of say, uh, this is a dwarf kind of Shishi Gashera type. I think this is a six, like a projected to be six foot and maybe 10 to 15 years. I'm not sure. It grows really, really slow. It's small, small one gallon. See all this is new growth up top here. So, see how it does. Next to it, this is a little rebel dogwood, I believe it's called. I'll show you the tag. Cornus Alba Little Rebel. Got some interesting foliage on it, interesting stemming during the winter. It was bright red. It's done, uh, the red's dissipated since we got more heat, but as it gets colder, that red will pick back up in the winter. It's, uh, I think I did plant these late winter, and they, they got some nice red stemming on them. Nice little accent for your winter garden. And the foliage is really, really soft and tender. Nice color to it. Next to here, this is, I'm not even gonna attempt to say this name. If I can find the tag, I'll show you. This is an Austrian pine though. And this is the name right here, Puric. Puric Brejune, Pinus. Niagara. Candle enough, really nice. I think this is another one that grows like, grows in a ball shape, three or four foot in 10 years. And had a little bit of time planting that one. Dug the hole and pulled that out at the bottom of the hole. All that was in the hole. Much iron, I don't know what it is. I'm still haven't got rid of it. Just a cool little conifer. Behind it, this is a uh, sugar shack button bush, I believe it is. And I think it flowers uh, May to June. It's supposed to get really nice fall color on it. I want to say this goes to zone eight, so I think it may be a little bit hot for it here. Haven't got great flowers or great fall color on it yet. We'll see. Moving on to Acer Palmatum Kurohime. Really nice, uh, gets pink colorations in the spring. You can catch it right, it looks like it's uh, flowering. But get great color on it, small leaf. This will grow, you know, kind of like a shrub form. Probably five to six foot, 10 years. Next to it, I have a Picea omerica called Pivet 10. It's a uh, has a blue green to yellow coloration in spring. It's candling up. It got a little dry. Dropped some needles, as you can see, but it's candling up. Got new growth coming off of it. So, hoping that'll fill back in over time. Serbian spruce, another one that's gonna it's gonna grow kind of in like a small pyramid shape, maybe four to five foot tall, and twelve to fourteen years probably, something like that, maybe a little sooner. Next to here, I have a newly planted Acer Palmatum Tamukiyama. Planted this one maybe four or five days ago. This was a, a gift also. So I wanted to put it in a prime place in the garden. Got this backdrop of the uh, yellow ribbon arborvitae that are probably 14, 15 foot tall right now. Get some great yellow color in the spring. It does get some winter bronzing on it as well, but just a nice screen between, between us and the neighbors. And I thought this would be a nice contrast. Put this uh, Tamukiyama in front of some some yellow uh, edged arbor varieties here. Moving on, have a Acer Palmetto Brocade. Small lace leaf type. Get some red to green to burgundy right now great coloring on it it's getting a little sh doesn't get a whole lot of sun where it's at but it's still looking pretty good I had one part of it die out over here so 
I was actually going to turn that. You can see I was going to turn it more towards the front because that side's a little bit thin. Now I'll let it be for now. In front of here, this is a I think it's called Regent Holds Broom. Uh, white pine, pine's part of the floor. Really, uh, really nice candling coming off of it. Like some, that's just an interesting color. Like some, uh, like a bronzy green candle coming off of it. You know, if you can see that new growth coming out of it, it's almost like a, like a pink red. This camera will focus. Pink red new growth coming out of it. Pretty interesting. It's a, it, it, it is an odd color to a conifer. It really does stand out. Uh, I think this is a three to four footer in 10 years. Just a, just a really cool blue green uh, coloring with some yellow to bronze new growth coming off of it. It is, it is really interesting to me. Moving on, next we have an Acer Palmetto Shiraz. Pink Japanese maple. And uh, this is his uh, second full year on the ground, I believe. It's looking great. It's handled sun like a champ right here. See the color on it. It said that Shiraz and Geshe Gone Wild are the same one. And I do believe it. But I bought this one as Shiraz. I think it looks good. So nice. Another nice back backdrop. With these yellow arborvitaes in the back. It stands out really well. I think this one 10, 12 footer. 10 to year, in 10 years, maybe 10, 12 years. Down below this, this is a Hanastrobus called Sea Urchin. Another small meatball type grower. Get, it's finally candling up on it. Some of my conifers are candling up a little bit late, seems like, but looking good. Looked kind of rough the first year, had it in the ground, but it's looking good now, actually putting on growth this year. So, low growing conifer, I think two to three foot in 10 years. It'll spread out about that far too, probably about a two footer in 10 years. But, nice accent. Next is uh, Shiraz I have here. Behind it, I have a Picea Orientalis Tom Thumb on standard. I have had one of these before and it didn't do well because I had it in too much sun. This one's where it's at right now. Morning sun to midday sun, filtered, and then gets quite a bit of afternoon shade. And so far it's a so far it's liking it. I got a lot of new growth coming out on it. You can see that. It'll get a little wider over time, but real slow. I have a, uh, I think this is a Carl Rosenfeld Peony. My wife loves peonies, I do as well. So, planted this one several years back. I still have some uh, flowers, or at least one flower, two flowers left to open on it. But just like a, you know, kind of like a, a violet purple to pink flower coming off of it. It does have some fragrance to it. That one's been there a few years. Right down below it, this is a Midori Ni Tiboku, I believe it is. A low growing Japanese maple, really small. Got a little winter damage, as you can see on it. I think this is one that gets wider than it does tall. So this will spread out. Grow under that standard. Or this way, a little ways. May leave it there for now, or may move it forward a little bit to the front of this bed. We'll see. Oh, I'm gonna skip over this. This is another Japonicum called Gossamer. A really slow-growing dwarf. Uh, one that's probably four to five foot tall in 10 to 12 years, if that. Another really interesting leaf on it. 
what do they say about this? Nothing's awesomer than a gossamer. But if you see a, one, uh, a specimen size of one of these, they're really, really, really impressive. But one of my favorite japonicums, so that's fairy lights and heavy weeping, of course. Just, just, the, just the leaf on it and the dwarf have it. But if you ever see a specimen in one of these, they're just fantastic. Hard to resist at specimen size as well. Moving on. An Acer Librarium Hot Blonde. This is one I planted last winter, I believe. Looking really good. I think it may be liking its location. It's put on quite a bit of growth since I planted it. This is all new growth right here. So that's a, I guess about seven, eight inches of growth. We're still in springtime. Hadn't even hit the heat part of the, the year yet. So supposedly when it gets hotter, these things are really supposed to take off. So I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah. Fill this area up right here. I think it look really nice. Behind it, I have a hemlock called a uh, Papalooski canadensis. This is like a ground cover hemlock, Got really slow. Got a lot of new growth coming off of it, as you can see. And this will just be like a little carpet, grow like a carpet along the ground, maybe a little higher, but not much. Just let it creep forward here towards this hot blonde. And it gets a good bit of shade where it's at right there. So, hoping it does well. Another little conifer. This one is called Twinkle Toes. Another Cryptomeria. I like to buy these little miniature uh, Isley plants. I have a few of them that I bought. And I've got a few unplanted. A couple of them in pots. But, yeah. Twinkle Toes, Japanese cigar. I think this gets some yellow coloration on it. Let's see, yeah. Show you the tag, if it'll focus. Anyway, I'll, I'll read it. Yellow foliage sprinkled throughout the plant twinkles in the sun. Artistic looking rock garden plant that bronzes in the winter. Two to four inches per year. Growth rate. Growth habit broad and upright. Hardiness negative 10 to zero degrees Fahrenheit. Sunlight. Part sun to full sun. But nice little miniature conifer. Grow real slow. Don't have to worry about outgrowing this space for a long time. If ever. Behind it, this is a uh, Pinocchio Cypress Dwarf Pinocchi Cypress that's probably in a little bit too much shade. If I brought it out in more sun, it'd have a lot more yellowing and gold to it. I think this is called a uh, Kamina, Kamina Heba, uh, Canvas Cypress Obtusa maybe. I'll flash the name up on the screen if I can remember. But it does have some yellow edges to the new growth. Got the yellow edges on the growth right now. Like I said, if I had it more sun, this thing would be a lot brighter. So, but it's doing good right here. I may pull that this one out next year, maybe in some more sun. But this is his, uh, I think his second full season on the ground right there. So it's uh, it's doing pretty good. It's put on some growth. Just doesn't have the coloring that it could if I had it in some more sun. All right, moving on. This was also another gift. This is a uh, false holly called a uh, Goshiki. Just a really slow growing dwarf false holly. Osmanthus called Goshiki. You see the bronze, new color coming off of it. The variegation, the white and green variegation on it. Looking really insane. Really slow grower. This was newly planted. I actually planted this uh, yesterday. You see that new growth on it. The variegation all over it. Really nice. front of it this is a another canvas cypress obtusa it's a dwarf 
This is called Moonshine. This is a Talon introduction. This is a this is actually another gift. So I've gotten a few gifts. Got some really nice friends. We take care of each other. So this was a, uh, a gift to me. Just a really interesting variegated uh, Camisifers obtusa. It's a really slow grower, two to three foot in ten years. I think they have one of these at Buckholz Farm, and it's only about three by three after twenty something years. So if it's that size in twenty years, I think it'll be even slower here because because our climate is a lot different than uh, where they grow them in Oregon. But really nice uh, variegation on it. Very not variegation per se, but I guess you could say that some white edging to green but just a that is an interesting one and i love the name moonshine all right moving on i'm rambling but i'm gonna make this the last part it may be an hour long but all right now we have another canvas for subtusa and this is another little isley miniature that i bought it's called butterball uh, as the name implies it'll grow in like a little ball shape really slow uh, read, I'll just read the tag to you. Confetti like splashes of multi tone yellows highlight those smaller spaces in the landscape. Excellent for containers or rock gardens. Growth rate one to three inches per year. Growth habit globe shaped. Hardiness negative 20 to negative 10 degrees. So, really hardy camera super subtusa. Really soft foliage. It's got some, uh, it's got some gold highlights on, in the middle of it. Just another miniature car for our planet. All right, back behind it is another maple. This is a, uh, this one called Seki no Kigan. This is a Saboldianum. Gets some excellent fall color. It's like a weeper. Now this was weeping way down. And as you can see, I did stake it up a little bit because it was really close to the ground. Maybe this high off the ground. So I wanted to raise it up. Carry this canopy. Let this canopy grow out a little bit more. But interesting Saboldianum. Above it here, have some uh, Snowball Viburnums. They're done flowering. A lot of flowers on them. And uh, they're just as tall as these arborvitaes here. About 14 foot tall, or, or that one is. This one is a little bit shorter. Get some really uh, nice white flowers in early April. But they're done now. Semi evergreen forest. If it gets real, real, real cold, it will drop a lot of that foliage. But for the most part, it is evergreen here. I have a perennial, can't even remember what this is called. Uh, I'll think of it after I, if I can remember, I'll put it on, up on the screen. I think this, I'll, I'll remember it in a second. Anyway, I have another Goshiki planted here, another Osmanthus, false holly. I have a smaller one planted right here and it's got new growth coming off it. They do like uh, park shade situations, especially here. So. These two will get a lot of shade and do get a lot of shade. All right, behind, back behind here, this is a dwarf pagoda holly. Just a really slow growing evergreen holly. Nice structure to it. Just thought it was really cool. Got some new growth coming off of it now. You see that lime green growth? No, uh, just really like them. Really slow growing. I think I saw a 25, 30 year old specimen that was only maybe four foot tall. Uh, but. Just something interesting i really want to add to the garden i really like it and i think these are called asters if i'm right uh, anyway i'll flash it up on the screen i'll find it put it up on the screen moving on this is a another pinostrobus this one's called coney island pinostrobus uh, another ball shaped grower probably three to four foot tall and wide in 10, 15 years. See, it's getting cones on it. As the name implies, Coney Island. Get some cones on it, really cool. 
all that new growth, blue green color. You see the shape of it. Candling up really nice. Just one I saw online, I just had to have it. Just a just a really interesting pine of strobus. All right, I'll take you back here. And I may do a separate tour just for these containers because if we're already at almost 30 minutes. All right, I have an Acer Palm Midden back here called Orizuru. As you can see, got some really nice pink to white to green variegation coming off of it. This is first uh, spring in the ground. I got this last year in the winter, I believe. Or maybe it was late fall. I cannot remember. But really, really nice variegation on it. Showing out big time. I don't know if you can see all that. And this gets filtered light back here under this uh, river birch, so I thought it'd be perfect. Pretty good height, it's about six foot tall. Be a slow grower. I might have to nip it back every few years to promote some of that variegation to come back. Thanks. Maybe this is one of the original types that you got to kind of watch. But look at all that pink and white and green on there. Just so nice. Look, that's what it was. I saw these in the greenhouse. I believe in, I believe I bought this in Labor Day. And it was uh, really nice coloring on it. Really nice variegation. So that one came home with me. Moving on, this is Kamoi Nashiki. Another variegated kind of dusting variegation on it. Highly recommend this one. Show you the tag. Nishiki Sabodianum just uh, gets excellent fall color really reliable on the variegation I think this is one you don't have to do any kind of pruning on it or anything to promote the variegation and uh, you see, hope that comes through on the camera good maybe a little bright but great variegation on it as you can see does that sand dusting effect one I recommend to everybody excellent fall color uh, interesting leaf on it interesting variegation on it just uh, one really unique that I think everybody needs to have to love that cultivar All right, moving on this is one called sheer song called plum wine it, uh, it has lost a lot of the color I would compare this one to uh, to Johan sheer song in a way uh, Probably really close. I think the leaves on Johan may get a little bit bigger. These leaves seem to be a little bit smaller, but it is more it is more shaded back here. But in a sense, if it's more shade, it should be a little bit bigger leaf. If, hmm. But I think the leaves are smaller. Get some really nice plum red to purple colors in the spring when it comes out. Still has that on some of them. It is greening up. I bought it a few years ago. Front over here, this is a uh, newly planted hydrangea called a uh, Yuki Gecko. Variegated hydrangea. As you can see, mostly grown for the foliage. Not so much for the flower at all. But really nice pop of whites and greens and yellows in that variegation. All right. Saw these online. I just I wanted to try one out in the garden. Just a really a really gorgeous hydrangea, really gorgeous coloring on it. So this was planted here about four or five days ago. Moving on, I have another canvasier for Septusa. This one's called Vocals Upright. Uh, this grows. I think this grows more uh, upright and stays really more on the slim side. Uh, Canvas Cypress obtusa, really soft foliage, attractive foliage. Just uh, another uh, species I really like, Canvas Cypress. I like the Canvas Cypress on it. And obtusas. But this one got planted about, I don't know, a month or two ago back here under this uh, river birch. So I thought it'd 
be good it'd look good here it's a nice evergreen backdrop next to this uh next to this joe hen so i don't got some uh hydrangeas so that one called pinky winky have another one over there uh get some you know pretty much standard white flowers get some pink edges on them i think that's why they call it pinky winky i think you're supposed to get some pink blooms coming out or white to pink edges they do okay not super impressed with those but they're there been there a few years so I'm letting them grow those pinky lotties you can trim back every year i usually trim them back about a third to about a third their size and this one will get probably about five six foot by the end of the season this i'd show you all right this is a pseudo suboldianum called Eastlid. I think another uh, name for it is a uh, ice dragon. Really interesting, cold tolerant lace leaf, pseudo suboldianum, and it's got it's got some really interesting color. It's not green, just plain green as you can see. It sticks out. It's like a chartreuse yellow to red to green. Uh, sticks out in the landscape. Excellent, excellent fall color on that from oranges to reds yellows i mean just glows in the landscape in the fall but it handles the heat really well got some great red edging on the leaf next to it another serbian spruce called burn ladders weeping which which is burn i believe this is called you see all the new growth coming off of it. This is more of a blue-green uh, conifer without the new growth. It grows, you know, slow growing. Another ball shape, three to four foot tall in 10 years probably. But doing really well in this spot. You see all the new foliage coming off of it. Back up here, this is a mugo pine called a Sherwood Compact. And I've seen one of these. They get, they can get upwards three to four foot tall. You can kind of see the shape it's growing in. Three to four foot, it'll get three to four foot tall in probably 10 to 12 years. I have seen one about that size. Check that out. If you can see that color, that purple. Purple coloration, it's pink to purple coming off that new grows right there. Candles look great. Sherwood Compact, Pinus Mugo. Moving on, this is another Shira song called Mikado. I I'm a big Shira song fan. You can tell I have several. A nice full moon maple. This one will get, you know, eight to 10 foot tall in 10 years. Just a super, super dark leaf on it. Maroons to reds to dark green, olive green. Another, you know, like I said, eight to 10 foot, 10, 12 years probably. But uh, gets, great, gets great fall color on it. All right, we'll quit try to, quite a trip rambling, quite a try to quit rambling on excuse me this is another serbian spruce right here it's called golden midget and this thing has been just uh i'm hoping it does really well right here in june july it will get a little bit of sun over here just a little bit but you can see all the new growth coming off of it, it is just glowing over here golden midget try to incorporate a bunch of dwarf conifers you know three to four foot tall in 10 years probably more than that they're probably long it'll probably take longer than that for it to get that tall here but you no know, they won't they won't quit growing but they can stay here for quite a while try to incorporate conifers and i skipped this is a magnolia called betty get some uh, violet purple to pink flowers on it just past this prime Get some blushing to the foliage, a little bit of blushing to the foliage. 
planted these here's two gallons maybe three years ago this one this one's over six foot and i've been having clips and branches off of it here and there trying to shape it got that one there and that one over here let's see I'm trying to shape them a little bit all right moving on to an azalea this is called magenta rose azalea uh, this would get you know five foot tall in 10 12 years probably magenta pink flowers bright pink flowers coming off of it small one gallons haven't seen flowers yet maybe next year side it this is a palm natum called blackbeard's gold get some crazy colors coming off of it in the spring this is semi newly planted late winter i believe or early spring so but it's holding on to some nice uh, burgundy red color on it right now so i look forward to this one and this one will get quite a bit bigger i want it to i don't care to fill this space up i need to get up here and uh do some pruning pick this canopy up take some of these lower hanging branches off this river birch great great tree love the river birch but i guess you'd call it a trash tree because it drops uh limbs everywhere all the time which is great if you need a uh, if you need kindling for like a little uh for your fire pit or something in the backyard that's good kindling for a fire pit so i can always come over here pick up a bunch of sticks to help start a little fire that little uh, russian sage right there got some growth coming off of it and this is acer palmatum firefly excellent excellent cultivar uh, i don't know if it likes this spot though because you see the new growth and look at the old growth it's like a muddy color so it may not like this spot where it's planted maybe too much root competition over here with the magnolia and the, and the hydrangea so this may actually get moved over here heck i may tuck it in i may tuck it in back here just in this little area filtered light take this branch off this uh a uh, snowball viburnum and just set it right back there behind this little papalooski i should give it enough shade and I, I trim these back quite a bit every season or every other season I'm trying to keep them shaped and opened up a little bit all right moving on thudja bacata whip cord we're already at 42 minutes but I'm, I'm gonna finish this got one more little bed i'm gonna run through uh, whip cord thudja bacata eastern uh excuse me western arborvita uh, really heat tolerant just interesting interesting growth habit you know just thread like foliage on it uh get another probably four footer 10 12 years probably longer back behind it this is a acer saccharum called monumental sugar maple uh leaves out really late every year i think there's only been leafed out it just started leafing out four to five days ago here it is april 26th probably one of the very last things i had to leaf out always makes me a little nervous every year main leader died but i got two leaders to choose from i can stake up and this will just uh over time you'll fill this area up grow up into the canopy of the river birch if it wants to great fall color on it uh, so far it's done pretty good in this spot moving on i have another uh little rebel cornus alba have one planted over there that i showed you and then one on this end so i have two of them planted another pinus nigra if i'm saying right or austrian pine called a uh, oregon green you see all the new candles coming off of it. Really slow growing, but an architectural type growth on it. Twists and kind of curls. Just a really interesting when they mature out a little bit more, start growing kind of kind of funky. That's what I, that's what I liked about this one. So 
And then up back there, this is a hibiscus called Blue Moon, I believe. Blue Moon hibiscus. This was transplanted really late winter. I actually just left the root ball sitting out in the yard. And uh, it stayed out all winter. And I just threw it in the threw it in the ground, hoping it was still alive. And this is another one. If y'all have any hibiscus, hibiscus is one of the, they always start pushing growth really, really late. So if you start losing hope on them, just give them a little bit more time because they are one of the last things to push push growth. But got a lot of new growth coming out of it. Get some uh, bright lavender to blue flowers coming off of it. That would be nice back here against this fence. So that's one bed down. That only took 45 minutes. I think another 15 will be done. So if you've hung with me this long, I appreciate it. Uh, I'll be sure to like, subscribe, all that good stuff, share with your gardening friends. So let's finish this up. Uh, all right, this is a deciduous conifer called Miss Grace. The redwood. Weeping redwood. As you can see, I got it staked up. So, it should fill, fill this whole space up right here against this fence. It's fine. It's uh, really good for like a wet area. And right here, this is where the water drains out right here. So, the water will pull up. You can actually see the line where the grass. So, water comes up a little ways. And it gets a little wet back in this area. So, it's a good... Uh, that's a good plant to uh, put in like a wet area, like a Dawn Redwood or a Bald Cypress, because they can soak that water up and they can handle it. But it should be interesting filling this spot up in the next, you know, 10 years. All right, moving on. This is a uh, another Makawa seedling that just recently planted. Got a really interesting shape on it. It's nice new growth coming off the top of it. A slow grower or the seedlings actually grow a little bit faster from what i've seen so i don't know maybe it might, it might actually beat that bald cypress in height here in the next few years we'll see uh, got some black eyed susans they actually split the other day took a lot of the roots off but you, know, you can't kill them i find them black eyed susans everywhere i had plants over here a few years ago and i still find them coming up Next to it, this is a uh, this is a Scots pine called Penguin, Green Penguin. Uh, another low growing, three to four footer in ten to twelve years. I have a few of these. I have Moser on the front. I have this Green Penguin. So let's push some new growth as you can see. Slow growing. Have a little nice little cone-shaped evergreen right there be nice back here have some ogon spirea some chartreuse green to yellow spirea back there as you can see depending on if you get them in sun or shade a nice bright foliage on it flowers late winter early spring white flowers on it and these were planted as these were planted as one gallons probably in uh Probably late 2018 or 2019, maybe. And they filled this space up. Nice accent. Really, really interesting plant. If you need, think, uh, think oh, I inspire you. needs to be in a lot of landscapes. Just, uh, texture's great. The color's great. It moves in the wind. Excellent fall color. Excellent fall color. Goes bright orange in the fall. Got another ornamental tree here. This is Okami cherry. Uh, one of the first trees to bloom out in the late winter, early spring. This one usually blooms out around February, late February, maybe mid to late February for us. Holds flowers for about three weeks before it drops them. And uh, just got a nice shape on it, as you see, nice canopy. We'll start limbing it up over time, get it over that fence eventually. Below it here, have some uh, things called black and bloom salvia. They just uh, had a plant and it just keeps seeding itself. Uh, 
I mean, it is a perennial, but it'll spread out, as you can tell. Some right here. I think I had the plant planted way back here. It'll seed itself, move around. Pretty reliable perennial. Next one, this is a uh, Makawa variant. Fairly new one called Mr. Miyagi. I think this is comparable to Tattoo. I want to say this one uh, will actually get a bit wider than Tattoo, maybe lower. So maybe like a kind of like a mushroom shape is what I was described it as the way it was described to me anyway. Yeah, got some nice new growth coming off of it. I don't know if you see that. And I just planted this here a few days ago. Right, moving on, I have another Japanese maple called Acer Palmatum Urusaki Kiyohime. And this is the best this thing has ever looked. Uh, really impressed with it. Get some, uh, got the great coloring on the foliage, as you can see. Goes in kind of a tabletop type of type of shape. So let it stretch this way, this way, and this way. It can grow however it wants to, I don't care. But Urosaki Kiyohime. That may be one. I don't know if you saw my previous video, I had a Capersi dwarf, it got smashed under my red uh blood good type maple over there maybe one i moved this one actually not over there i don't know i got a window over there that i need to plant something under when i finally do the bed i think about maybe putting that under the window i'm not sure i'm not sure i'm just thinking out loud rambling all right uh go pine let me finish this up 51 minutes i know y'all probably tired of me talking a little mugo plant, pine planted here, I don't know, seven, eight years ago, maybe. It's doing okay. Uh, storm cloud Amsonia. This one I was talking about, get some black stemming on them. You see that dark stemming? It's more black at the base as it comes out. But uh, I can actually shear this back right now, about halfway. And I'll get more flowers here in about three weeks. I got three of those. And this is a uh, Ace of Palmetto called St. Michael Arch Archangel. Arch Archangel, if I can say it. Let me show you the tag. Another, I think this is another broom. Just dark foliage on it. I think this is a five footer in 10 years. And it's already three and a half to four. Fill this area up. Trim it'll calm you up. Let it grow this way if you want, this way if it wants to. And another conifer here. This is I don't even want to attempt Picea Engelmanii Bushes Lace. Upright growing slender conifer weeping. As you can see. Really nice blue green bluish foliage on it. Doing really well right here so far. Uh, I post an update video in July on how are the conifers doing. Let me know if y'all'd like to see that. This will get on up there over time, over the fence, hopefully. Behind it here, this is a fragrant. Uh, I think this is a, it's called a Itia. No supposed to be fragrant it's not very fragrant no this ain't fragrant this is a virginia sweet spire uh flower enough right now flower you know flowers in may early may get a little bit of dye back in it uh suckers at the base so it can spread out if you can see that it does sucker at the base so this this will spread out over time and hopefully get as tall as that fence one day it's great fall color on it. Another one I planted here probably, I don't know, seven years ago, something like that. Have another uh, storm cloud Ansonia. Moving on to Acer Palmatum Lillian's Jewel. Looking really, really nice so far. Semi newly planted in this location. Had this one in a container for several years. 
And as you can see, it is, it is over six foot tall where it's at. And it's a little narrow, but over time it'll fill out hopefully. I hope it likes this spot. Uh, I had it in a container and it was getting full sun in a container and handling it pretty good. By July, did uh, some of the ends of the leaves did burn a little bit in July, but for the most part, did okay. Moving down, we got a Pinus Thumbergii called Kotobuki. Really slow growing black pine. Got planted here last year. Only grows an inch or so a year. You can see the new growth right there. It's probably an inch of new growth, maybe. So, hopefully it'll handle it over time and be okay right here. Uh, our black pines in our areas are maybe a 10 to 15 uh, shelf life on them. 10 to 15 year shelf life. So, we'll see. Back here, I have the remnants of the lore peddling that got killed back. This is a purple diamond. It's got some new foliage coming back on it. It's got killed, killed back two or three times already. I'll never get a uh, decent size shrub on it. That keeps happening, but be another three to four footer in 10, 12 years, or about 10 years. Probably faster than that. With our heat, that'll go way faster than that if it'll ever start growing and not get hit back. All right, moving on to the last thing. I have an Acer Palmatum Summer Gold. Super heat tolerant Palmatum. Uh, one that I've noticed you know, we'll burn the first year or so as it uh, as it matures out, roots out more, keep it mulched up and watered. It will do uh, it will do quite a bit better. Uh, this is my second one I've had right here. First one did get winter killed after the Arctic blast, I believe it was. But and it was just getting to where it was uh, just handling that sun just fine. After about three years, it got it got killed. So. Easter Palm made them summer gold. And I forgot to tell you, got some Coreopsis. Get some yellow flowers on it. That's pretty much it. So, guys, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this lengthy last part five walkthrough. Getting close to an hour. If you've hung around this long, I thank you very much. Uh, share with your gardening friends. Throw me some comments down below what y'all would like to see. Give me some kind of feedback. Let me know what y'all would like to see, what's looking good in your garden. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Y'all have a great day. I'll see y'all in the next one.